So let's talk about The World Is Not Enough, Pierce Brosnan's next to last stallion as James Bond. <laughs> Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents the summer of 007. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and as you can see, I'm back in my room again, for now anyways, but I'm still having a bit of a stitch here in my room, but I'm not going to mention this, because that's my problem, not y'all, so please don't bother asking, okay? Things should be back up and going later on, I promise. For now, I'm out to give you another James Bond review. If you've not seen my reviews for the other movies, plus the Sean Connery and Roger Moore rankings, please click on the card to go to the playlist. There we go. And let you catch what you might have missed, or see them again if you'd like. I'll give you ten more seconds. Okay, that ought to do it. And now let's talk about... The 19th James Bond film, The World Is Not Enough, released in 1999 by MGM, being the first to be released by the parent company to the original R's and Distributors of the first 18 United Artists. Once again, Pierce Brosnan returns as 007. The film was directed by Michael Apted, with the original story and screenplay written by Neil Purvis, Robert Wade, and Bruce Fairstein. Produced by Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Bacoli. The title is taken from the translation of the motto on the fictional Bond family, Coat of Arms, seen first in Honor Majesty's Secret Service. The film also has Sophie Marceau, Robert Carlyle, Denise Richards, Robbie Coltrane, and Dame Judi Dench as M, plus Desmond Llewellyn in his final performance as Q. So let's get started. Well, our story. In Bilbao, MI6 agent James Bond meets a Swiss banker to retrieve money for Sir Robert King, a British oil tycoon and friend of M. Bond interrogates the banker to attempt to identify the assassin of an MI6 agent, but the banker is killed and Bond is forced to escape with the money before he finds out. At the MI6 headquarters in London, the money is revealed to be laced with explosives that kill King. Bond chases the assassin by boat on the Thames to the Millennium Dome, where she attempts to escape via a hot air balloon. Bond offers her protection, but she refuses and blows up the balloon at the cost of her life. Bond traces the recovered money to, Re to Renard, a KGB agent turned terrorist. Following an earlier attempt on his life by MI6, Renard was left with a bullet in his brain, which is gradually making him immune to pain, but will eventually kill him. Emma assigns Bond to protect King's daughter, Electra. Renard previously abducted and held her for ransom. Bond flies to Azerbaijan, how the heck you pronounce that, where Electra is overseeing the construction of an oil pipeline. During a tour of the pipeline's proposed route in the mountains, Bond and Electra are attacked by a hit squad in armed paraglider-equipped snowmobiles. Bond visits Valentin Zakovsky at a casino to acquire information about Electra's attackers. He discovers that Electra's head of security, Sasha Davidov, is secretly in league with Renard. Bond kills Davidov and boards a plane bound for a Russian ICBM base in Kazakhstan. Posing as a Russian nuclear scientist, Bond meets American nuclear physicist Christmas Jones. Renard m removes the GPS locator card and weapons grade plutonium from a nuclear bomb before Bond can kill him. Jones blows his cover. Renard steals the bomb and flees, leaving everyone to die. Bond and Jones escape the exploding silo with the locator card. Back in Azerbaijan, Bond discloses to him that Electra doesn't seem to be as innocent as she says, and hands her the locator card as proof of the theft. 
An alarm sounds, revealing that the stolen bomb from Kazakhstan is attached to an inspection rig heading towards the oil terminal. Bond and Jones enter the pipeline to deactivate the bomb, and Jones discovers that half of the plutonium is missing. They both jump clear of the rig, and a large section of the pipe is destroyed. Bond and Jones are presumed killed. Back at the command center, Electra reveals that she killed her father as revenge for using her as bait for Renard. And soon she abducts M, whom she resents for advising her father not to pay the ransom money. Alright, now to the ending. You know the procedure like always. Five seconds to stop. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, continue on. Here we go, right about now. Okay, you've been warned. Bond accosts Zakowski at his caviar factory in the Caspian Sea, and they are attacked by Elektra's helicopters. Zakowski reveals his arrangement with Elektra was in exchange, in exchange for the use of a submarine captained by Zakowski's nephew, Nikolai. The group goes to Istanbul, where Jones realizes that if Renard were to insert the stolen plutonium into the submarine's nuclear reactor, the resulting nuclear meltdown would destroy Istanbul, sabotaging the Russian's oil pipeline in the Bosphorus. Excuse me. Electra's pipeline is planned to go around Istanbul, dramatically increasing the value of her own oil. Bond gets a signal from the locator card from the maintenance tower. Just before Zakowski's henchman, Bull blows up the command center. Zakowski is knocked unconscious, and Bond and Jones are captured by Electra's henchman. Jones is taken aboard the submarine, which was seized by Renard's men. Bond is taken to the tower, where Electra tortures him with a garrot. Zakowski and his men seize the tower, but Zakowski is shot by Electra. The, Z the dying Zakowski uses his cane gun to free Bond, and Bond frees him and kills Electra. Bond dives in after the submarine, boards it, and frees Jones. The submarine's hull ruptures as it sinks in the Bosphorus. Bond fights Renard and kills him. Bond and Jones escape from the submarine, leaving the flooded reactor to Danny underwater. Later, Bond and Jones share a romantic evening in Istanbul and end up in bed together while being monitored by MI6 satellites. End of story. So what I think of the world is not enough. Well, I will say it's it's good in some ways, but, well, I know it has a lot of good fun and all, but however, the critics were a little hard on Denise Richards, who played uh, Christmas, played Christmas Jones and what have you, uh, because her cousin was being frequently targeted for criticism. And the plot was too, as a matter of fact. So apparently, she was widely criticized for not being credible in the role of a nuclear scientist. Which I completely do understand them, why have you. Uh, yeah, she's not really the best one, though I was... No, I was actually a big fan of hers at the time after seeing her in movies like Starship Troopers and Wild Things. Well, it was still an, still okay. Now, as for the rest of the performances, Pierce Brosnan, once again, is, isn't too bad as James Bond, of course, since this was his next to last outing, but still not really one of the best Bonds. But anyway, Sophie Marceau plays Elektra. Pretty good. Robert Carlyle plays Renard, who was pretty good. Robbie Coltrane, who this was still just a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a ways before he would play Rubius Hagrid in the Harry Potter series. He would return um, from Goldeneye. 
And of course, um, Desmond, Desmond Llewellyn makes one final performance as Q. Although he was not officially retiring from the role, the Q character was training his eventual replacement in the film. He was unfortunately killed in a Llewellyn was killed in a car accident shortly after the film's premiere. Now Samantha Bond returns as Miss Moneypenny. We also have Colin Salmon back on board as the Deputy Chief of Staff to M. Charles Robinson, and Michael Kitchen as Bill Tanner, M's Chief of Staff. So that's about it. Now, oh yes, we do also get introduced to Q's well assistant and appointed successor R, played by funny guy John Cleese. Anyway, despite the plot and um, Denise Richards was hard for well for criticism, which again I'm understanding and what have you. But anyway, David Arnold did the score for it, which isn't too bad. But of course the theme song's gotta be um pretty darn good, as it was done by Shirley Manson and her band Garbage, which I was a big fan of at the time. Because I liked a lot of their songs such as Stupid Girl, Only Happy When It Rains, and Special. Anyway, while despite the mixed reviews and the criticism, the film went on to make $361 million worldwide. And it became the highest grossing James Bond film of all time until the release of the next one, which I'll get to that in a little bit. The film got nominated for several awards, and um, Pierce Brosnan won the Empire Award and Blockbuster Entertainment Award for Best Actor. David Arnold won a BMI Film Music Award for his score. But unfortunately, the film became the first in the Bond series to win a Golden Raspberry when Denise Richards was chosen as Worst Supporting Actress. And Richards and Brosnan were also nominated for Worst Screen Couple, but, that, but unfortunately, they lost to Will Smith and Kevin Kline for Wild Wild West. But anyway, yeah, but anyway, The World Is Not Enough also got a video game for the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation. I wanted to play it, but however, after knowing that this movie didn't do, well, wasn't as big, but even though it did pretty well at the box office, well, I just turned it down. But anyway... With a mixed cast and what have you, and um, well, some good direction, and a pretty good theme song, and a pretty good score, and all that, and a, kind of a 50-50 in the story department, would I recommend The World Is Not Enough? Well, I'd say give it a one-time watch. Only if you're a completionist. Give it a one-time watch, and if you're not satisfied, don't bother with this again, okay? So anyway, that's that's about it. But I grew up watching this a few times. It was it's the only Bond movie I actually have in my old video cassette collection. I don't have any others. But anyway, so why are your thoughts on the world is not enough? Tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Pierce Brosnan's final Bond Alling in Die Another Day. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other films I've recently done. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the new Disney flick, Jungle Cruise. Or, if you want, check out my recent review for a real cult classic in Howard the Duck, which has already been doing well in views. Or, if you want some more Denise Richards, go to the bottom left-hand corner for my review of Wild Things. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.